Hi, everyone. This is Valerie Gregoire. Thank you for joining me today. I'm a natural health consultant and herbalist. And today I'm going to talk to you about flower essences and how they can help you to rebalance your emotional health. Now, years ago, um, I started in this field of natural health over 30 years ago. And when I first was in this field, it seemed to me that our focus was mainly on the physical body. And um, I ran a little health food store in Arizona way back then. And just thinking about the people that would come into the store, they were mainly interested in how to improve their health, how to fight disease, how to in um, improve their energy or their sleep patterns, how to lose weight, different things like that. But everything seemed to be focused around the physical. And back then it was kind of thought that if you could correct the diet, exercise, take nutritional supplements, um, and just generally be a positive person, then the emotional aspects of your life would follow suit and balance themselves. But I think we can all tell that over the past 30 years, <laughs> this theory didn't quite work. And um, in um, allopathic medicine, they've always tended to separate the emotional body from the physical body. And doctors were actually trained, you know, to kind of ignore that and not to express emotion too much and be very analytical in their physical approach to healing the body. So we, we learned to kind of stuff our emotions under the surface and ignore them. But emotions are made of energy and they are going to continue to try to surface, sort of. I always think about this like um, if a, a glass of Coke, all the bubbles are always trying to come to the surface and pop. That's how emotions are. You can't keep them buried. You can't keep them hidden. They're going to affect your health. You have to let them rise to the surface and release themselves um, and to rebalance your, them. But with all the conditions of so many years of just kind of keeping this all under the surface and kind of ignoring emotions, and then the dysfunctional ways we were raised and uh, taught to deal with our emotions, it really can, by the time you get into later adulthood, you can really have kind of this um, mess, a Pandora's box of emotions that are affecting you on a physical level, but you don't know what to do with them. And so this is where flower essences come in because they are vibrational remedies that work on rebalancing the emotional well-being. So to talk about them, let me pull, share my screen with you and I will um, share a little bit of some photographs as I'm talking just to make things a little more interesting. Okay. So flower essences, like a homeopathic flower or formula, like a homeopathic formula, a flower essence is a vibrational remedy. They are liquid extracts and they contain the vibrational patterns of the flowers, but they do not contain any vitamins or minerals or plant substances. They are just energetic formulas and they affect um, they support emotional well-being and they um, support the mind-body health. And you can kind of think about this in a way where um, there are certain things that affect us emotionally, even though we're not consuming and digesting them. Let me see if I can find a way to move my screen. There we go. Okay. For instance, <laughs> I took this picture of the waterfall with these two flower essence formulas in front of them because I really thought that the waterfalls captured the um, idea behind a flower essence. 
When you sit at the base of a waterfall, you're going to be affected in some way. The, the power and strength that the waterfalls has. Um, when, I, when I'm at a waterfalls, I feel that feeling of being able to push through something, to overcome an obstacle. And at the same time, the way the waterfalls ends at the water and then kind of just settles down and creates a quiet area in the water, that gives me that sense of peace and tranquility. So to me, a waterfalls represents that ability to move through a situation with power and strength, overcoming obstacles, and yet being able to have that calmness and tranquility while you do so. And and to get all this emotionally, I didn't have to touch the water. I didn't have to drink a glass of the waterfalls in, a, in order to able to feel this because what I did was pick up on the vibrational energy that's there. Um, and a lot of it is there because of the negative ions that are released at a waterfalls. They tend to lift the mood. So there's actually something physical going on here, um, but it's, affecting your emotional health just by being in the presence of the waterfalls. So likewise, being in the presence of different flowers and by taking a few drops of a flower essence internally or applying them to your skin, that vibrational quality is going to affect you. We all know that like when we're not feeling so great or we go outside and we just see some beautiful flowers. I mean, most of you probably at some point have picked a bouquet of flowers and brought them in and set them next to you on your desk or your kitchen table or something. And you were excited about the way they affected you emotionally. The vibrations of the flowers are coming out of the flowers um, so whenever you pass by flowers, when you smell their scent, when you see them, you're going to be affected by their vibrational personality, okay? And this you can relate to the fact that if you were at a party and somebody walks into the room and they're very vibrant and in a good mood and happy, then suddenly the whole party can shift to follow suit with that person's particular energetic mood at the moment. At the same time, you could have somebody call you that's depressed or angry. And by the time you get off the phone, you're feeling depressed and angry. And 10 minutes ago, you were in a perfectly good mood. You absorbed their vibrational pattern. So this is how the flower essences affect us. They affect us by affecting us on energetic levels. Gardenia, for instance, helps us to move, to shift our perspective to help us move through change. Okay, it kind of gives us a new perspective. And one of the aspects that you can tell about this, about a uh, gardenia, is if you've ever seen them in the blossoming stage, and I have a very large gardenia bush outside, they go through so many stages before that flower is fully open. They go there, and each stage is very beautiful. There'll be a very tight spiral. The petals are all tight and spiraled, and then they'll begin to open. And you can even see in these two flowers where you have one that's got more of a closed pattern and one that's opened more. So they are they expand and change really um, quite a lot in their blossoming. And so this gives us a clue that they can help us shift our perspective as we move through change. And now the lavender is a flower essence that quiets the mind and it promotes clarity of vision. So you combine these two flower essences, you're going to have um, the effect of both of them in your life. So if you had a difficult situation that you had to move through and you couldn't deal with it because you weren't thinking properly, you needed a shift in how you're thinking about this, but then you're also overwhelmed by your thoughts and you're thinking too much and you're getting anxious, 
just picking gardenia and lavender and putting it by your bedside, by your desk or at your kitchen table, somewhere that you're going to see and smell and appreciate these flowers and be in their presence, then they are going to give you some qualities to move through that change and to quiet your mind and to shift your perspective so you can open up a clarity of vision. So this is how they can help you in that way. Now, the flower essences themselves were discovered basically, at least the written um, history of them that we have, was discovered by Dr. Edward Bach in 1930s. And he was a physician and a homeopath. So he already worked with healing the body, and he already worked with vibrational remedies because homeopathic formulas work on vibration as well. And he noticed that the flowers seem to affect people. As we all know, you get a bouquet of flowers and you're like a totally different person, okay? So he must have studied the flowers and he, he studied um, where they grew. I think I have some notes here if I can find them. <laughs> nah, forget it. I write these notes and I can't look at them while I'm talking to you, so they're useless. Um, okay, so he studied um, the flowers. Where do they grow? What type of soil are they growing in? What type of um, pests do they deal with? Um, do they bloom in the summer? Do they bloom in the winter? Do they bloom in the morning or the evening? Um, so just studied what the challenges were, what kind of colors were they? You know, we all know that a purple flower is going to have an energy that's more relaxing compared to a red flower is going to be more activated and vibrant. It's going to affect you that way. So he studied everything about the flowers to figure out their personalities. And then I don't know how he did this or why he did this, maybe um, spiritual insight and guidance, but he decided that if you put those flower essences in some water and put them out in the sunlight, that the sunlight would allow the personality or vibrations of the flowers to pass into the water. And that does make sense to me because Water holds memory, and they do know this scientifically now, that water can pick up um, the vibrational imprints of whatever it's around. And so water it has an ability to retain a memory. So when the flowers are floating in the water, the sunlight releases their essence, releases their sense into the water. And in so doing, it also releases their vibrational imprint. Um, and what surprised me was when I first made my first flower essence, I was surprised that the water, after I took the flowers out of there and poured it off and put it in the little jar, I was surprised that the water smelled like the flowers. I did not think that would happen. So that was kind of a cool thing. So thinking about what um, Dr. Bach was saying about the personalities of the flowers. Here is a beautiful azalea flower in March in my yard. And we had just had some snow after they all started to bloom. And a lot of flowers, you know, if, the, if we get snow and rain and ice and just things like that, when these flowers first bloom, the next day they're all dead but not with an azalea. Azaleas are very resilient in harsh weather conditions. And even though the little stamens on the end, if I said that right, I think so, they get little frozen balls of ice on them and the snow is there. What, by the time that all melts off, that flower is still look good and the plant will continue flowering. Um, so azaleas as a flower essence then, will encourage standing in your own personal power during uncertainty or adversity. See, they give you that power to stand up and still be who you are, despite the fact that there's adversity all around you, okay? They also give you a strength to handle whatever comes your way. And certainly this flower is telling us that, that he's saying, you know what? 
I don't care if it snowed. I'm going to be myself. I'm going to stand strong. I'm going to just blossom and bloom despite these situations. So an azalea flower essence would be very helpful if you were feeling that way. When I was writing this class, I move myself here. Okay. When I was writing this class, I um, took a walk in the morning and it was very foggy. And I, the sun was just barely coming up and the fog sits on the meadow. And I'm walking out and I thought to myself, what flowers might be blossoming during the fog? Because a, the fog is a time when there's not a lot of clarity. And, and you feel very alone when you're in the fog because you can't see anything around you. You can't see the path before you. Um, so there's an uncertainty. There's a, a feeling of feeling alone. There's a feeling of, can I get through this? Um, how do I break through the fog? Things like that go through your mind when you're surrounded by fog. So I thought if there was a flower blooming, now mind you, this is before the sun is actually all the way up. I took this picture with enough sun so that you could see where I was. Um, but basically the sun is just coming up. I'm looking for, is there a flower that's fully open at this stage in the midst of fog? And I found that there were two of them. The first one was the morning glory. And the morning glory is a flower essence that helps a person to release patterns or behaviors which seem impossible to shift. And if you think about that, that foggy morning, when the fog is settled like that, it seems like I am stuck in this situation. And yet here the morning glory is fully open. So he's kind of saying, I can um, get past this thing that seems to hold me back and make me feel stuck. They also help a person to let go of past situations. So even though you're feeling lonely and you don't have a clarity um, and you don't know where to go, they, they kind of give you that ability to say, you know what, I can move past this and I can still let my light shine. So the morning glory offers a new perspective and vision and helps you to bring forth your talents and shine to the world. And I love morning glories because I should have gave you another picture from the other side of a morning glory, but that little tube captures the sunlight. And when you see a morning glory in bloom, the center is always full of light. And so they are showing you that despite what situations, even despite a foggy morning, they're going to go ahead and shine their light. So they are a flower essence that could help you to bring forth your true essence and shine it to the world. The other flower that was blooming that morning was the honeysuckles. And the honeysuckles are interesting because they grow along the fence row. And in this case, they're growing along a fence row that also has the barbed wire on it. And I, I think the barbed wire always um, symbolizes the challenges and places that we get stuck in life. And so, and the fencing is like a symbolism of something that holds us back, right? So honeysuckles thrive on the fence rails. They, and they are ready and willing to be blooming early in the morning before the sun is really made, reached its fullness. While the fog was there, they were still already opened up. So a honeysuckle essence um, is gonna support people who are stuck in the past and dwell on their hurts or their wounds. And it also helps the, uh, with people who cannot see a way out of a current situation. So again, we can see how that related to the fog because in the fog, you can't see the way out of the fog. And, but there is the honeysuckle blooming in the midst of a fog to say, I'm the type of flower, my essence, my presence, just being around me is going to help you to move through something that you don't see a way out of. And it is a beautiful smell. 
that flower essence. It's absolutely beautiful. So I went home and I decided to create my flower essence that morning. I had um, picked some of the honeysuckle and some of the um, oh, azalea, no, morning glories, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I got too many flowers in my head. Okay, when you pick the flowers, you should always ask permission of the plant as to which of these flowers it is willing to give to you to take home to make the flower essence. That's just a respectful thing to do in nature, um, not to just kind of cut away at the plant and take all its flowers. I, so I kind of just, you know, approach it and say, thank you for your message. Thank you for your beautiful scent. And thank you for um, your willingness to help us. And um, which of these flowers can I pick? And then you kind of just get guided as to which ones you can bring home. Um, a lot of people go to a lot of trouble not to touch the flowers with their hands. I, I'm, I'm not really... Um, one that does that, but a lot of people do. So if you want to wear gloves or something like that and drop them into a little bag, you could do that. Um, so using spring water, okay, needs to be a nice clean water. I wouldn't use a bottled water as much as a spring, a true spring water or filtered water. Um, I'm not sure I'd use distilled water because energetically it's kind of a dead water. So I used a spring water. And I put my flower petals in it, and then I set the bowl out in the sun for three hours. You do three or four hours in the sunlight. And sometimes flower essences are made in the moonlight, um, but I made these in the sunlight. And then I also decided to infuse some sound um, vibrations into this um, flower essence. So I, because I do um, sound healing and sound therapy, I used a 528 tuning fork because that 528 tuning fork resonates with um, divine love, healing, transformation, miracles, um, and healing of our DNA. So it's a, it's a, a beautiful frequency for restoring wholeness to the person to the person. So I tap the tuning fork and I play it over the water and water again, holding memory absorbs the sound frequencies. And now we have the flowers and the sound frequencies in this um, water that's being created for the flower essence. You could also say an affirmation, you could say a prayer, you could play drums, you could um, sing, you could do many different things to add a little personal touch to your flower essence. Now, I wanted to talk about I thought there was another photo before this one, so it kind of threw me off. Um, okay, earlier when we looked at the waterfalls, we saw that flower essence called Distress Remedy. And that was Distress Remedies made by Nature Sunshine. And they have um, several different formulas that combine seven different flowers in each formula for a specific person purpose. And so Distress Remedy is very much like Dr. Bach's Rescue Remedy. Um, they, have, they share five of the same um, flowers, but this um, formula, Distress Remedy, adds the Arnica and the Red Clover, which makes it a little bit different. And also, I do like that that was done with this formula because the Arnica flower um, works very much on physical trauma. So Distress Remedy overall is a formula to support emotional and physical stress or trauma and help you to um, promote tissue healing and calmness and to get over a traumatic situation or a highly emotional situation. Um, a car accident, for instance, would be a time when Distress Remedy or Rescue Remedy would be good. Um, because you're very upset, you might physically be hurt, you can't um, focus and you're worried. And so having something like distress remedy, you would take some drops under your tongue um, every 20 minutes in a case like that. 
I would do it 20 minutes and then see if I calmed down. And if I didn't, I would do it again. And then eventually you typically would do it about four times a day. But the flowers um, come together in a certain way. They, first of all, they want to they're combined to help you move through this traumatic experience. So we see that the Arnica, which works very much on the physical trauma and stress on the body, but it does affect the emotional body as well. But then Star of Bethlehem, it gives you that sense of comfort. You need that, Are you okay? So Arnica is helping you release the stress and the trauma. And Star of Bethlehem is coming in with a comforting energy Rock Rose helps you to overcome fears and calm the thoughts so that you can think more and focus during this time of stress and trauma. Impatience helps you to overcome frustration, irritability. I mean, you know, you get in a car accident, you want to swear and yell and and um, you need to be calmed down. And I think it might be a good idea that people carry the little Thing of distress remedy everywhere they go because you never know when you're going to need something like this, right? Um, Clematis helps to anchor your reality, to create new opt 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 optimism and bring us back to earth. So the first four flowers, they were kind of dealing with the situation to say, all right, calm down, get focused, breathe, okay? You can make it through this. But these next three are working to shift your emotions in this to get you to the next place. So you'll see with the clematis, there it's helping to bring in optimism. Hey, you know, I know this is a bad situation. Calm down, get back to earth, but you're going to get through it. So it's giving you an optimistic look in despite of the trouble. The cherry plum relie um, relieves the feeling of having loss of control in a situation. So it's like, yeah, this happened and you, it was beyond your control, but it's okay. See that flower is kind of, again, shifting the way you're thinking about and dealing with the situation. So it doesn't, you don't go on carrying this trauma for months, years, whatever, a lifetime. Okay, it's, it's helping you to shift to get a better perspective. And then red clover generates just a calm, stable presence. So you can see we're bringing in a combination of flowers like this can assist you um, from just overreacting with your ego and getting into such a tough that, you know, you got to go to the emergency because now you're having a panic attack, okay? You can also combine two or more flower essences at one time. So we have the distress remedy that I just talked about. And another favorite of mine is Be Courageous. And these are both Nature Sunshine's flower essences. And Be Courageous also has seven different flowers. And they help you to overcome obstacles which are holding you back in your life and help instill confidence to move forward, to release your fears and your doubts. And they give you courage to speak from your heart and fearlessly take a stand for whatever you believe in. So a lot of times these two things work very well together. Say you were working at a job and you thought you were doing a great job and you thought maybe you were even gonna get a promotion, but you come into work and instead you find out that they've let you go and that you're just fired for no specific reason. This is trauma, this is um, upsetting, this could send you into a tailspin. But if you had these flower essences, not only would the distress remedy help you to calm down and focus and realize that, hey, you know what? You didn't like that job anyways. You really subconsciously wanted a way out, but you weren't feeling brave enough to do it. So this getting fired was really a blessing because it's forcing you to get to make the move you wanted to move and make in the first place. But because you weren't, you didn't have that courage to make that move, you need to bring in that be courageous formula. You need those flowers to help you to be able to move forward in this new situation. So it's great to combine different remedies. It's okay to do that. Flower essences work um, on something called the four hour, 
the four R's of the, how they respond in the body. Stage one, when you begin to take the flower essence, it's called release and relax. Your mind respond, your body and mind start to respond to the flower essences and you experience a general sense of calm. You notice a shift in your perspective and you may become more conscious of your thoughts. So you're becoming more present, okay? In some cases, you may go through an emotional cleanse instead. Um, and if so, it's okay. So just realize, hey, I started to take this formula that's supposed to be making me happy, but now I'm feeling angry. Well, just realize you're releasing some held emotions that um, need to be moved out of the way in order for that calmness to move in. So in the first stage of the flower essences, you're gonna stay present, you're gonna observe the changes, you're gonna remember to breathe, to allow and to release whatever comes up that's not needed. Now, generally flower essences um, works over a period of about a month, okay? So these stages might be days or they might be weeks, okay? You might be in stage one for a week, or you may move quickly through it in a matter of hours or days. Um, but just being aware of this is helpful. Now, stage two comes is the realization and the recognition that comes as these flowers um, affect you. In this stage, your soul moves into your deeper emotions, okay? You begin, get, you um, gain a understanding and awareness of the pain or the unresolved emotion you were dealing with and where it originated from. You like, you get this understanding of why you carried this pain for so long, why you carried this trauma for so long. So you, you move to a place of understanding. And at this place, you can gain new insight and understanding, and you begin to get clarity and a sense of well-being begins to take place because now you've, you've got a shift in the way you see the situation and you have a clarity and new insight is able to come to you for solutions. The next stage is reflection and reconciliation. Now, a lot of times with flower essences, you just stay in stage one and stage two and you don't necessarily need this stage three, but some people do go into stage three, so it's good to know that it exists. Um, if we knew move into stage three, we might need to need, dig deeper with more self-reflection. So that means that the issue that the flower essence is helping us to work through, we might it might just be so rooted in us that we need to do some journaling. Um, self-reflection, some dream work, some pretty weird dreams might come up while you're on the flower essence as you're working through these things. Um, you might want to do art therapy, drawing, um, making something, gardening, um, meditation or prayer, and in some cases you might seek counseling. So in other words, if, if it's a deeply rooted situation, you might need to dig a little deeper do a little bit more cultivating of releasing the emotion. And as you continue to take the flower essence, you move through this stage, they support you in your journey and they help you bring your soul to a place of healing and transformation. And so that is our fourth stage of the flower essence. It's renewal and transformation. In the fourth stage, we move from the past to the future. We can see new possibilities, new solutions. We develop positive traits of inner strength and we get gain self-worth. We become more compassionate both to ourselves and to others and we become more creative. So we've actually made a transformation and that is the beauty of the flower essence. It's from moving you to a place where you are stuck, trapped, held back, emotions buried, to bringing them to the surface, to expanding, understanding them, releasing them, and then 
transforming them so that you transform to a totally different person, a different way of thinking. And at that point, you will find that you're not attracted to using that flower essence anymore or only periodically. And that's perfectly fine. So this photograph here is of one of the kitties I used to have, Kiki. And she loved when I did sound healing and worked with the sound healing instruments. So if she heard me playing my instruments, she would come in on the massage table and curl up. And this was after one particular sound session that I even worked with her with the sounds. And she just completely got in that zen, relaxed, stretched out, releasing a sense of peace from the sound waves. So like the sound waves moving through the body, the flower essences will bring the body and mind to a state of harmony and balance. <sighs> a typical dose, five or 10 drops, four times a day. But like I said, when you first use the flower essence, sometimes I use it like every 20 minutes for a few times until I feel it kick in. It just depends on how responsive your body is to the flower and the frequencies. Um, you can put them under your tongue. You can place them in a beverage. You can put them in a glass of water. You can spray them in a spritzer and spray yourself, or they can be applied to the body. Give yourself about 30 days for the emotional shifts to be completed. Um, be aware of the different stages that you might move um, through during that time. Your energy, any energy, always follows intention. So you should also consider using affirmations or focused intent of some type to amplify the healing properties of the flower essence. So you um, can make um, you can make little cards that you hang up with an affirmation on it. Or I have um, these little stones by my desk that have that say I inspire healing. And um, I just keep them here to remind me of my intent to inspire healing in others. And so when you're working with the flower essence, depending on what that motive is, you can use symbols or affirmations or prayer time or meditation time to enhance how the flower essence will work in the body. And you're going to create positive lifestyle changes during this time. You don't want to just take the flower essences and not do anything on a physical level, because even though we're working on the energetic level, we should always combine it with the physical. So make some positive lifestyle changes while you're on the flower essences. Um, and this will help to enhance the, the effect of the vibrations, but it will also help to anchor them in the physical realm. So improve diet, make sure you get some sleep, take a bubble bath, um, take a walk, okay? Do some stretching. Um, whatever you need to do on a physical level that would bring you more into balance, that would be the key. Well, I wanna thank you for taking the time to um, spend with me today and um, I'm gonna close with these beautiful um, morning glories again, and you can see how they love to reflect the sunlight from within. And I hope that this has given you an idea of something different that you can use um, as a tool to enhance your healing. So thank you very much. And I look forward to the next time we are together. Bye-bye now.